President, I arise today to discuss three individuals that have been nominated by President Biden to serve as members of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, also known as FERC, F-E-R-C. Uh, just last week, uh, climate uh, scientists announced that our planet has surpassed the one and a half degree Celsius warming threshold for the 12th consecutive month. And the signs of climate change are all around us. Alaskan rivers are turning orange and as a result of rapidly melting permafrost and the resulting chemical reactions. Much of the Western United States is experiencing temperatures 20 to 30 degrees hotter than usual for this time of year. And scientists tell us that uh, there's more carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere today than ever before in history. We are running out of time to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and slow climate change. Having said that, uh, I've always believed that in adversity lies uh, opportunity, and uh, there's still time today, and there's still opportunity today. Thankfully, last uh, Congress, uh, presiding officer and I and a bunch of other folks on this floor uh, passed the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law and the Inflation Reduction Act, two uh, once-in-generation investments in infrastructure and in fighting climate change. Together, uh, these laws are making and stimulating the investments in clean energy and infrastructure that we need in order to reduce our emissions and to meet our climate goals. As a result, more clean energy projects are in the pipeline in this country than ever before. In fact, according to the Clean Investment Monitor, clean energy and transportation investment hit a record $71 billion in the first quarter of this year. That's $71 billion with a B this year, dwarfing last year's $51 billion at the same time frame. And we haven't stopped there. We haven't stopped there. The Biden administration is taking strong steps to build a more efficient and effective environmental review process in order to connect clean energy to the grid as soon as possible. For example, in April of this year, the Council on Environmental Quality issued their final rule to implement changes to something called the National Environmental Policy Act made by the Fiscal Responsibility Act last year. This rule reforms the permitting process and will accelerate the deployment of clean energy technologies like solar, like wind, and like battery storage, all while advancing environmental justice and ensuring that committees have a voice in the build out of critical infrastructure. One might ask, how does the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission support our clean energy future? Well, that's a good question. Let me take a shot at it. As it turns out, connecting clean energy to the electric grid and delivering this energy to consumers who demand it remains one of the major challenges to help transition our grid to reliable carbon free sources. And with well over two terawatts of energy, I, I asked myself, I said, what is a terawatt? I think a terawatt is a billion. Two terawatts would be two billion. So we're with, with, with well over two billion watts of energy, most of it clean energy currently on the sidelines, FERC plays a vital role in expanding our nation's transmission capacity in order to allow new projects to move forward quickly. To put that figure again in perspective, that's two billion. 2 billion watts of energy. That's double the amount of electricity generating capacity that we have today. For example, just last month, the FERC finalized two rules to tackle pressing challenges in the transmission planning process. But there is more to do, and there's a lot more to do. And it's up to us in this body, in this Congress, and over the House of Representatives, but especially in this body, to ensure that the Commission has a full slate of commissioners in order to continue the, their work to modernize our electric grid in the 21st century. As we know, President Biden has nominated not one, not two, but three well-qualified individuals, two are Democrats, one is Republican, to serve terms on the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission on FERC. One is David Rosner, one is Lindsay C., and the other is Judy Chang. Last week, and we were joined here on the, on the Senate floor by the chairman of the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee, 
he'll, he'll have more to say about this in a minute, I know. But uh, last week, his committee that he chairs and leads reported these three nominations out of committee with broad bipartisan support. Should they all be confirmed this week, uh, Congress will have done its job to ensure that the commission is fully seated so that FERC can continue to advance these policies that we need to bring, uh, that enable us to bring more clean energy off the sidelines and onto the grid. I am grateful for the bipartisan support shown for, uh, so far for these nominees in the committee, and, uh, and I salute the committee chairman in uh, no small part for that. And I hope that uh, in a few minutes here, they're gonna receive the same kind of broad bipartisan support uh, today and in the days to, uh, to come. And uh, with that, uh, Mr. President, I think the, uh, I, I'm, as a West Virginia native, I'm happy to yield to the floor to another West Virginia native, two former governors, and who have uh, found uh, common ground here on these nominees to, the, uh, to FERC. And then with that, uh, Mr. President, I yield the floor. Thank you.